Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is part two of the swim analysis series for the marathon runner. All right, so let's get right to it. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Swim Vice channel. I'm Coach Mandy and of course today is the part two series of the swim analysis for the marathon runner. If you haven't watched part one yet, I highly suggest you watch that first. Otherwise, this part is not gonna make too much sense. And plus, you wanna see the difference anyways. So just as I explained before in part one, the priority was on the left arm or both arms, but definitely the arm sweeping behind the spine on exit on both sides. So I want you guys to really pay attention to that and what you see in terms of a difference in this next video. All right, so let's get right to it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and play it and this will be the above water video first. Of course, like I said before, is I'm going to play it all the way through and then move it frame by frame from there. Go ahead and play it. Wow, what a difference. Such a smooth transition for both arms from exit to entry with no interruption, nothing getting stuck, especially on that left arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and focus in on that left arm since that was really the main thing uh, before in that part one video. So right here, if you remember from before, is she used to be really stuck right about here. So there's no lifting as before. So right now she's actually releasing the arm, starting to release the arm away from the body. So there is an improvement there. And she's not from before previously where the elbow was completely stuck here and also wrapping behind her back and getting stuck to the point where this hand had to lead like this. Now she's actually starting to release that shoulder naturally and look what happens as a result which i'm going to point out right here which is so awesome is that she's actually swimming from her lats and not her shoulder anymore if you remember that her shoulder was completely retracted back like a seated row and you can kind of see the tension like this pre previously now you could actually see her lat is engaged because she's letting go of the shoulder taking over and allowing it to start to naturally move in the right path there's still more improvement that needs to be made however it's significant what a difference um, that is made here so her shoulders feel much more relaxed and it's not necessarily if she's seen dramatic speed changes right now it's very early on but definitely the feeling of having that relief of not feeling so strained in the shoulders. And that's a big deal. So, and that's something that's gonna help keep people swimming for a long time. So, and you can see the entry is still great. It's still early, it's fine. It's not overreaching or anything. And also as a result, if you do remember before, is that this arm is now fully extended out front and she's got a very front quadrant stroke, which is so much more natural. She's gonna actually feel a glide that she you know, has been working for and it just looks excellent. So nice work, she's gonna to start to get a catch um, and nice release on this side too. So this is a big difference um, from before. She was stuck here, but now she's starting to get out wider and it's starting to make this natural curve. And what I mean by natural curve is from, let's say the starting point here is that it's gonna come around, woo, back to entry. This nice, perfect kind of uh, circular motion where the full release is happening here and then the entry is happening here so it's a nice easy smooth transition without any interruption and that is such a big difference um, still picking up her head a little bit for the breath but the priority was all about this arm and not getting stuck and I'm gonna play this through again so you can see this nice glide she's getting from from not getting stuck at the hip anymore Wow. What a difference in momentum, it's being streamlined and having that consistency with every stroke. So that's a really good improvement and that's uh, just in a short amount of time. So um, nice work. All right, so now let's go on to the underwater video and to see any difference in terms of timing out front and see if that arm is waiting out front with not sweeping back with a straight arm. So just seeing some subtle differences compared to that first video. All right, so we'll get going with that. So, okay, I'm gonna play it through and then go from there. All right. 
much better with the uh, front quadrant feeling and that's from just letting go of the shoulders being so tight from before so that's a big difference what's funny is uh, since she started to release the arm um, away from body, not get stuck over her hip. It kind of triggers the kick to start kicking faster because she's actually moving faster. So the fact that she's feeling more momentum, it's like that trigger impulse of wanting to kick just to uh, maintain it when in reality she doesn't need to kick nearly as much. So that's just kind of a reaction that's typical um, for someone just starting out in terms of fixing that issue. So. I'm going to go ahead and move it right here. And actually, you can see right in this position here is that she's sitting so much higher on the surface. She's not sinking like she was before. Um, and you can start to see that there is not so much of this pinching here as in the first video. So it's definitely uh, much more relaxed, starting to ease off the tension and not feel like she has to swim from the shoulders and really stabilize off her core. There's absolutely no arch in her lower back. It's completely straight. So I know that she is... Uh, she is definitely uh, engaging the core and not letting it go, and that's from not swimming from the shoulders. So that looks really good. Now, going forward, I love the timing out front. That looks really good. She has this arm entering while the other one is still out front. And because of that, you can see her hand is relaxed. Remember in the first video, she was bracing her hand with tension, with a straight arm sweeping back, locked out from the shoulder. Now, the shoulder's soft, the hand is relaxed, and she's now just starting to learn a catch. It's not quite there yet because it hasn't been a focus, but she's starting to let go and start to feel the water and ultimately learn how to leverage properly. All root problem being from swimming from the shoulders and finally letting it go. That is why she's able to see this uh, result, or I'm able to see it, I'm sorry, and you are able to see it, uh, the difference here. Okay, so moving forward, nice timing on this side too. Excellent, excellent work. That looks great. Um, and just really aiming to have both arms out front as often as possible. This is going to really just get shut off the feeling of really high turnover is going to move you faster. Think about low turnover first and then start to add power later. And that's why this is such an important part of her priority and her stroke in order to sustain this for a long period of time. And remember with the breath before, even though she's lifting her head a little bit, now when she goes to get her breath, she returns her head back and that arm is still out front. But remember before that arm was completely fallen 90 degrees. If I can draw it, hold on, let's see. If you remember, it was like that before. So um, she has a lot more stability with the breath. It's starting to be uh, feel a lot easier um, just because of that one priority. So what a difference. Okay, so I just wanna go through a quick recap of the above surface video again, and just emphasizing what has changed in this video compared to the first one. So let's go right to it again. Okay, so. Yeah, what a difference in momentum. And you just see this consistency with her arms moving forward. There's no sticking points, nothing is interrupted. And that's all from just letting go of the tension in, in, in her shoulders. And right here, you just see this nice bend happening here. She's a very front quadrant stroke. That means that she's letting go of the tension. She's not swimming from her shoulders anymore. She's swimming from her core and hips. And of course, her lats, which you can clearly see is engaged here. And I point this out because most runners and triathletes that try to swim and they feel very frustrated is because they are picking up their, actually, yeah, they're sweeping their elbow past their hip, which is a normal movement in running. Uh, but it's slightly different in the water is that you have to relax your shoulders and, act, and let the bend happen actually out here, out front here and not at your hip. So that way you don't feel stuck and most importantly, you don't feel any pain in your shoulders, and I cannot emphasize that enough. And of course, if you want a little more detail on that, I've also put a quick link to the scapular plane video in this video just to refer back to it so you can kind of get a reference of how the shoulder is supposed to properly move in the water. All right, so that concludes the part two video of this swim analysis series. And if you found these videos helpful, drop a comment below and also show your support by giving it a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner. I post videos weekly to help with your training and also always keep me posted on your training as well. 
And of course, before I sign off, click the links in the description below to help with your training. All right, swimmers, enjoy your practice, and I will see you all next week. Thank you.